Engagement 101 is brought to you by Employee Engagement Awards and Conferences Africa. Welcome to Engagement 101. I'm Tricia Sibbons and I'm here in the studio with Dr. Jerry Goulet, CEO of IPM, the Institute for People Management. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Thank you, Tricia. Glad to be here. Excellent to have you. So we're talking this morning about employee engagement and I know some, it's something very close to your heart, Jerry. So just to kick us off, um, perhaps just reflecting a little bit on some of the things you've been doing in the last few days yeah, that yeah. engagement pops out and... Uh, yeah. and talks to you about. Yeah. You know, Trisha, um, the workplace, I sometimes say the workplace uh, can be a very difficult place, um, particularly for, for women and sometimes for all employees. So over the last couple of um, weeks, and particularly this week, I've been, I've been really blessed to have participated in some, in some activities that bring that to the fore in the light of where we are in terms of uh, technical developments or technological developments, the fourth industrial revolution, what is happening, and, and the, the fact that work is changing. And that can bring a lot of stress and in a way cause people to be disengaged in mm -hmm. terms of how we speak about it, what it means to people. Because, and, and, and you know, talking to leaders, one of the things that leaders must be careful about is whatever we say, the people that work for organizations um, would tend to either can take that as something that gives them hope or something that threatens them, make them feel uncertain about what's going on. So when you talk about the, the fourth industrial revolution and, and you have all these exaggerations, millions of jobs are going to be worldwide, are going to be decimated. Whilst that may be true, but it's how you portray that message. Uh, and, and I mean, when technology comes through, because you want engagement from your workforce, your current workforce, as you work with them towards the future. So bringing that hope, I think it's a key thing when you talk about, about engagement. Now, so these things should not be seen as a threat. Leaders have a responsibility. And when I talk about leaders in this context, I, of course, I mean the boards, the executive management, the senior management in a company, anyone who leads a team has to be really careful that the words they use about change, about transformation, are not disempowering. Engagement is about making people still feel excited about being in the workplace. No, that's incredibly important. Yeah. And I think, as you say, the, the, the world, the global economy is so uncertain. Yeah. So yeah. what you're really saying is leaders yeah. need to have uh, in mind very much about bringing hope yeah. and using engagement as yeah. a way of bringing that hopeful message. Definitely. Because when you do that... That's it's such a big moment. It's caring. I mean, engagement really is about do you care enough? Because if you care enough about your people, the people will give you their best. Because they, in fact, as, uh, as leaders, when we, when we show that we care for our people, and by what do I mean when you care? Engage. Let them engage with the work. Let them know that you rely on them to achieve the results that you require. You don't treat them as if when they come to the workplace, they leave their brains at the door, at mm. the gate. Mm. One of the things that I like doing with my, my current team, even now at the Institute of uh, People Management, is to say, guys, so here is a problem. I, I don't have all the answers. Uh, you know, this assumption that because you are in, a, in some sort of leadership role, you have all the answers... You disempower people. Mm. Remember, Trisha, the people that come to work for an organization, these are adults. They, are, they run their own families. They're involved in their own communities. How come when they get to the workplace, we treat people as fools? Mm. I, I just, that's one of the things that I'm actually passionate about, a, a, a number of things, but mostly how do we manage people for excellence? Um, and to allow them to, to bring their full potential. And I think part of it, for me at least, is that um, having worked for quite some time uh, across different sectors of the economy and uh, being the age that I am now, realizing that, in fact, the end is near than the beginning, <laughs> really the question becomes, what are you doing? Um, what environment are you creating? What legacy are you leaving behind? It's not about you. 
It's about what you create around you. So engagement is about that. It's about unleashing the potential of the people that you lead. If we were to do that at every level, not just in the workplace, you can talk at all, at all levels of society. If we were to make people feel important and that they can make a contribution, a meaningful contribution to change their environments, to change their workplace, make people understand that the profitability of your organization actually is not a management thing. Mm. It's a collective effort. Mm. People come to the party. That's my experience. Uh, but the workplace can actually be very uh, debilitating if you have the wrong kind of people are leading one who don't understand that you work as a team and this is what it means by saying that i don't mean that you don't have rascals in the workplace because you do mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean we have all these commissions <laughs> running mm -hmm. uh, running around uh, in, in uh, at, at the present moment in south africa precisely because things didn't go right um, some of the rascals got the upper hand and therefore disengagement happened and people didn't do what they were supposed to do do you think the organizations that get criticized day in and day out, I've been in some of these organizations mm. where people just feel, yes, man, this is not the right place for me to mm. be. What's the point? What's the point? Mm. Can you tell us um, perhaps an experience you've had where you've seen engagement you know, actually happening really, really yeah. well? Yeah. Is there something yeah. you can... I've seen pockets of that. Mm. Um, I will, I will refer to an organization that I worked for. Maybe I don't have to be naming it mm. here. But when we, we, we embarked on a program, and we called it New Economy Leadership. Mm -hmm. So basically, we are saying there's a traditional way of leading an organization, and there's a new economy way of leading an organization. How do you transform this organization from this traditional, autocratic way of leading? First of all, you must use metrics. In other words, understand where you are, assess the benchmark where you are, and say, where do you, what? If you look at the literature, the best organizations, the organizations that have lasted for the longest time and performed their results show, what is it that they've done? And you benchmark yourself against that. Mm. Then you can see we are a traditional organization. We need to move towards a new economy. What are the behaviors for new economy organization? The leaders need to understand that. So in this particular organization that I worked for, we did that assessment. We said, world-class organizations look like this. Mm. You talk about leadership, the way they communicate with their staff, the way they remunerate the policies that they run, the way they, they deal with unfairness, apply discipline, the way they apply ethics in the organization. And you have to, you have to be open to feedback. In fact, if you are going to em engage anybody, Part of engagement is communicating, getting feedback. Uh, your employees, my team saying to me, eh, sir, this, this is not going right. How as a leader, how open are you to feedback? Or oh, I'm the boss around you, you're not, you're not going to get feedback. The most winning teams, the most winning companies are companies where people take feedback. So you do the benchmarking, you say this is where we are, this is where we want to be. How are we going to behave? You behave yourself into success. Mm -hmm. And when people see you walking the walk, leading by example, you are bound to get engagement. Uh, I'm, I'm actually, I, I look back at that moment when we had the different departments because we're benchmarking. So you benchmark the entire company, then you say, okay, a company is made of different sectors or different departments. How are they, when you look at them, benchmark against each other, who is leading, who is more new economy leadership style in this, in, in, you know, in the company? and you have them compete against themselves, that engages people. Mm. That does require yeah. quite a brave leadership team, I mean, to yeah. switch from, yeah. from those kinds yeah. of styles. I mean, yeah. how do you, how do you uh, encourage or incentivize yeah. the leaders of those departments to make that change? Yeah, uh, you know, change, and <laughs> fortunately, unfortunately, is something that has to, be, has to be driven from the top. If your leadership is going to pretend that everything is okay. They are okay when even when they are not okay. So one was fortunate to be working with a team of leaders who understood that they were vulnerable and made themselves vulnerable. Because if you are going to be seeking feedback, particularly from staff, from your employees, they will tell you, okay? 
I, I personally, I mean, in my whole department, I remember everybody had to talk to a consultant about my leadership style. And uh, so we, went, we took off to a conference and they gave me the feedback. One of the things that you do when you get feedback, my experience, at least what I used to do, you listen. Um, <laughs> in fact, this works even in the family. Just sit and listen. Don't say anything. Acknowledge what is being said. The beauty of getting feedback from people is that they can also tell you how you can be the, the best leader to them. They can tell you that. Boss, if you do one, two, three, this... If, but you must, people must feel free that when they tell you these things, when they give you the feedback, we are not going to turn around and, and you know, start... Call back at them. Yeah. yeah. You, you're going to be open to that. So you have to create that environment. So I, I would just say that leaders must be must be real, authentic, because part of the, you know, putting on the mask doesn't help. Um, people see through the mask. Great. They know you're not serious about transformation or change. Thanks, Jerry. We're talking to Dr. Jerry Goulet, CEO of IPM here yeah. in the studio on Engagement 101. We're just going to move right now to an ad break and we'll be right back to talk more engagement and leadership. Engagement 101 is brought to you by Employee Engagement Awards and Conferences Africa. Award entries are still open for free until March the 12th. See the website for full details and entry platform www.ee-awards.com forward slash Africa. Meet us on March the 27th in Lagos and June the 11th and 12th in Johannesburg. For more information, connect on Facebook, Employee Engagement Awards Africa or at our website or phone 063-692-1813. You're listening to a brandlive.co.za podcast. Welcome back to Engagement 101. It's Trisha Sibbons here. I'm talking to Dr. Jerry Goulet, CEO of IPM. Jerry, we were talking earlier about leadership and authentic leadership. Um, Talk to us a little bit about um, gender in the workplace and transformation from that point of view. It's Women's Month. We've been reflecting on equality and equality of opportunity. Talk yeah. to us a little bit about your experience yeah. in, that, in that frame. Yeah. It's subject close to my heart. Um, I think particularly this time, when we see what we read in the news, what's happening to women um, socially and the work, in the workplace, um, not just in South Africa, but globally. Um, celebrating International Women's Day. Um, I mean, it's always a reminder. I listened to Pumzile yesterday, Pumzile, our former uh, vice president here in South Africa, who, and uh, who is now in the UN, talking about just the issues of gender um, and, and what's happening in the world, worldwide. I mean, all the studies uh, tell us that when you bring um, around your, your board or your boardroom table women, the, the conversations change, the, the, the productivity of the, of the organization changes in terms of how it performs financially. These things cannot be disputed. Deloitte has done studies. A number of, of organizations have done those studies. So, so we know the value. Um, and, and it, it's God's design. It's not our design. Uh, we know the value that women bring around the table to an organization. Um, I, I, I go back again to what I said earlier, that unfortunately the workplace, if you look at cases, I mean, we, we, at, at the conference, at the IPM conf convention last year, we had a lady to, uh, talk about um, bullying in the workplace. Um, the, unfortunately, the people who get bullied the most are the women. Uh, they get bullied walking, just walking up the street. Mm. Um, mm. So it, 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 it's a tough environment for women. But we have wonderful women, effective women that are, as you know, are, are, are in boards, are leading uh, companies. Mm. I, was, I was at a gender mainstreaming event uh, only um, on, on, on Thursday uh, this past week. And it was gratifying to see a CEO of an organization there who was female, uh, leading one of the high-tech uh, organizations here in, in, in our country. So we know that 
when women are given the opportunity, they will rise to the occasion. That's my has been my experience. Um, one of the things that I listen to, I, in fact, from a woman, that a woman does not have to behave like a man when they get there. They have to keep, they have to be who they are. Again, we go back to being an authentic leader, who you are, because you, when there is no pretense, you're going to bring your best game, your mm. A game mm. to, the, uh, you know, to the party. And do you think there should be quotas? I mean, is that something that you would advocate for? That is a, actually is quite an interesting debate because just, just talking about South Africa, more than 55%, I think, of the population is, is women. Even in the workplace, we have a majority of women. But when it comes to who is leading, who mm. is at the top, there's an absence of women. And, and, and with, I mean, the, the Employment Equity Act came in in, nine, in 1988, um, that legislation that said you, we must prioritize women as one of the designated groups. I think we have met strides, but when it comes to the senior levels, the board, the board levels, we know that we are nowhere near where we should be. Quotas, I think um, it's a debate. Um, the, the problem is, is enforcement. Mm. You know, uh, when pe people do things just because they want to comply, it, 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 it be, I'm not sure whether that's the way to go. Or we should see the value the, and, and the, the business benefits that we, we derive from having, um, you know, promoting women um, um, uh, to be at the levels that they should be voluntarily. But I think, I think there will come a time when you say, you know, enough is enough. Is enough. Maybe now we need to go that route and have quotas. Mm. Mm. Well, I mean, hopefully, if we if we adopt some of these engagement strategies that yeah. we're exploring through yeah. uh, the awards and conferences, yeah. um, some of that will, as you say, start to tell the tale on its own and, yeah. and not require us to be yeah. um, from a quota point of view, but actually to take down those patriarchal structures mm. yeah. and look at policies of engagement mm. that allow mm. for mm. creativity mm. and uh, merit yes. to take its place. Um, talk to us a little bit about your work as chair of the... South African Employers for Disability. Yes, yeah. The South African Employers for Disability is an organization that was started by a couple of blue chip companies in South Africa. Basically, and it was actually initiated by HR directors who felt, well, the Employment Equity Commission, when they released their stats every year, were saying, listen, we're not making any headway when it comes to employing persons with disability. Mm. So we, we, but we knew that some companies actually were quite advanced um, in, in terms of that, integrating persons with disability in the workplace. And, and so we came together, we said, what can we, you, certainly we can learn from one another. Those that are doing well, what is it that they are doing? What can the others that are struggling? And so we came together and formed this forum. Mm -hmm. It's been going now for, as I say, since 2005. And I, I, I've been fortunate to be the chairperson of that organization. So we, we meet every quarter, bringing uh, companies together uh, to, to talk about how can an organization become disability confident? It's modeled after the UK f uh, employers for, for disability, which, uh, I mean, they, they, those guys have more than 20 years of good history and research behind uh, the advantages and the benefits of really integrating persons with disability in the workplace. Persons with disability are your most loyal employees because once they get the job, if you give them the right job at the right level, they will stay in the job because they don't have the options of jumping around. So if you want loyalty and productivity, you will get it from persons with disability. Oh, that's totally fascinating. Yeah. I know at the Employee Engagement Awards yeah. last year, um, Ford Motor Company South Africa, yeah. I think, you know, took the winning prize, but there was yeah. a lot of competition for that. So yeah. it bears out what you're saying is yeah. that employers are beginning mm. to look at the opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and technology is doing wonders. I mean, with the, with the, the as we we said earlier, artificial intelligence, the fourth industrial revolution, it's enabling persons with disabilities, giving us new technologies that we can apply for reasonable accommodation. And I, luckily, the costs are also coming down for reasonable accommodation, making sure that people have assisted devices to enable them to to do the work that they do. I just to to say, I was at the University of Pretoria and looking at some of the work that they do there um, to enable uh, uh, people who may have a speech impairment, a hearing impairment, but using technology, they are able to do wonderful things. So 
uh, you know, it, 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 it's a group to explore to see some of the good work that uh, those guys are so, doing. So something to to yeah. invite the University of Pretoria to showcase perhaps at yeah, the yeah, engagement definitely. conference this yes, year. Yes, that yeah. sounds totally fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about what you're hoping for in the future um, in terms of how yeah. people management is going to evolve. Yeah. Our success, not just as organizations, but as a nation, as a country, South Africa, even as a continent, if we are going to win the competition um, in terms of how we perform as organizations, be at the top of the pile instead of being at the bottom of the pile when we are assessed, it is really because all our people at every level are fully engaged with their jobs um, in what they do. They are not just being looked over by the supervisor. We create that culture. So that's my hope, that when we, in, you know, going forward, that we'll be world-class managers. That's why the IPM is really open to not just HR professionals, line managers, because it's about people management. How do you bring the best out of your people as a manager? So that's my hope. That's what we, we, we hope to be doing uh, going forward. The, in fact, uh, the theme for our conference this year is fearless leadership. Uh, and that's going to take a number of different strands in the, will, and, and, and be fleshed out in, the, in some of the breakaways that we'll have. But we need, we need to be fearless as leaders, as employees. So at every level, remember, leadership is not at the top. To lead others, you must first lead yourself and confront your own fears. So fearless leadership is about being really honest about yourself. So I'm hoping that we will as we run some of the, 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 the leadership things that we run, that will enable leaders to be authentic, to be fearless, to be honest um, with how they lead so that we can create buzzing organizations in South Africa at every level. Uh, I don't buy to the, in, in, into, into this thinking that uh, we're third world, we cannot be world class. In fact, we do have some world class organizations. We can have more. I mean, that's certainly true for the Employee Engagement Awards. We've yeah. seen some world-class practice from yeah. the continent, and that's partly why mm. we're so passionate about mm. the Employee Engagement Agenda to showcase and to, to catalyze some of that fantastic work and yeah. share and learn from each other. Tell us about the conference dates. Yeah, so the conference dates are, or we, we normally, we now there's a tradition that when we have our, 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 our annual convention, we start with the Gulf Day. So on the 20th of October... We'll have a golf day in White Sun City. So I invited all those golfers to come around uh, to do the golf. Then on the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, we, we run the conference and we close on the 23rd. Um, we'll have some wonderful speakers. That sounds very exciting. We'll definitely be there. And from the employee engagement point of view, you're a judge. So you'll be busy judging yes. when we close yes. for entries uh, yes. on Tuesday, the 12th of March. We close for entries and... Uh, Judging will commence until April mm -hmm. and in June, on June 11th and 12th, we'll be having the conference and the awards. So we look forward to seeing you then, celebrating as we did last year yes. with some of the fantastic case studies. Thanks very much for being with us. Thank you, Trisha. That's Engagement 101. Thank we'll you. see you next week. Thank you very much. Podcasting, the practice of using the internet to make digital recordings of broadcasts available for downloading to a computer or mobile device. Or, as they say in South Africa, a fantastic way to tell a good story or to bring your brand to life. To find out more on how podcasting can change your brand or your 2019, speak to us at brandlive.co.za. Brandlive.co.za. We bring your brand to life.